Hey friends, today we were hanging out at Disney's Contemporary Resort and we were going to be having dinner at Steakhouse 71, Walt Disney World's newest restaurant. And I have been looking forward to eating here since I first found out they were changing from the Wave to Steakhouse 71 and I was lucky enough to grab a reservation. Anywho's, let's go do this. Steakhouse 71 opened on Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary, October 1st, and I wasn't able to get an opening day reservation, but I kept on trying, and I was lucky enough to grab one today for October 2nd, and it's the dinner menu. So the lunch menu and the dinner menu were completely separate, so I figured dinner would probably be my best uh, option. It's actually kind of funny because you have breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then they have a separate lounge menu. So I think since our reservation isn't for just a couple minutes, maybe we'll go into the lounge, grab ourselves a fancy drink, and see what their menu is like. Maybe grab something off there, and then head on in for dinner. Now, like I said, this was a very hard to get reservation. I literally was just, just I was in the app, and I just kept on hitting and hitting and refreshing and refreshing, and eventually, boom. And here it is. We might as well go check to see if there's actually any open seats for the lounge. And I already love the decor. I seen this uh, when I came and checked it out when they first took down the walls. And it's just got so much history of Walt Disney World. It's everything that I love. Like, I would probably decorate my house like this, actually. Especially with all the monorails and contemporary photos. That is unbelievable. But here we are. Take a look at this. <laughs> Looks like they have an open seat at the bar and I get to hang out with my favorite bartender, Bo. And I have to say, uh, I didn't see all of the different art and decor in the restaurant until right now. And I love it. Can I just, it's my favorite themed restaurant and I'll show you exactly why because they have this retro looking furniture, but most importantly, they have a picture of the people mover. And I feel like that just wins it all. I mean, it's not just the people mover, it's all of Tomorrowland, but the first thing that I see is the people mover. I am a little sad that the blue rooms are gone, but I think I'm okay with the new room that they have now. Look at this furniture, look at the lights. I mean, this is really beautiful in here. I really like it. Like, it's really homey and cozy. This can definitely be the new number one spot for monorail crawls. If you guys recall the other day when I was at the Magic Kingdom for the 50th anniversary, they brought out the Life magazine for the opening day of Walt Disney World in 1971, and they recreated the picture with all the cast members in front of the castle. This is it right here, but it's just blown up and a lot larger. And just look how beautiful that is. That really blows my mind. Now that we got a spot at the bar, we can look through the menu, order ourselves a cocktail, and maybe an appetizer. I mean, I feel like I'm gonna be eating a lot inside Steakhouse 71, but I do wanna show you guys as much as I can. So anything I don't eat, I'll just probably put it in a to-go box and take it home. Maybe give some scraps to Gracie. She surely will love that. Here is a look at the menu. The lounge has crab cakes. They got Steakhouse 71 onion rings, loaded mac and cheese, peanut butter and jelly chicken wings with a sweet peanut glaze and jelly powder, which I think I'm gonna probably 100% get. They've got the burger, they got the shrimp cocktail, the bacon and eggs, and I wonder if that's the same bacon and eggs as they always had here. It could be, it was kind of like their signature. And for the drink menu, uh, they have a lot of all brand new cocktails, and I decided to start off with the Coco Belvedere. And look at this fancy little drink. This is what mostly resembles what Walt would have ordered. That's what my uh, good friend Bo told me. Bo's the best. <laughs> The Coco Belvedere is served with the Disney Knob Creek. So that is some fancy stuff right there. So cheers, and we're gonna give it a, a test here. I got to, I can't just sip like this, a little bit funny. My cherry fell in my drink, but it's very delicious. <laughs> That is actually very, very delicious. Very smooth too, and I love these cherries. I'm gonna pull one off actually and let it sit in there. Oh, don't drop them. Don't drop the cherries. There we go, that's the way. Just let that soak it all up and then we're gonna bite into it. Now it officially soaked up all the liquor and we get to try it. Wow. I love those cherries. <laughs> I'm assuming it's the same 
That is it. Thank you so much. That's perfect. Thank you. Yes, That's the same one we use, right? Yes. Soda water. Wow, very fancy. All right. Craziness. <laughs> Craziness, brother. A friend of mine bought me a drink over there and it's not a pop. Cheers! <laughs> Thank you. Look at this. That's the drink uh, Bo was just making and wow. That's all I gotta say. There was a lot to it and whenever I feel like there's some additional steps to uh, a drink, it means the drink is gonna be pretty amazing. Alright, that's good. I don't know what Bo just made me, but it's better than the Coco Belvedere. I mean, I like the Coco Belvedere because I love the uh, single barrel uh, Disney Knob Creek, but this is very refreshing. Oh, yes, thank you. That's the fancy stuff. Enjoy it. <laughs> Mystery solved. It is a Mora Highball. They changed the name on there, so it is on the menu. And I like that one, like I said, a lot better than the Coca Belvedere. But now it's time for chicken wings. It's wingy time. <laughs> Me Tommy, me want wingy, uh, peanut butter and jelly wingy, and look at these. Don't they look so amazing? They're definitely very hot, so you gotta be careful. And I'm gonna need a wet nap because they're very sticky. But here we go. Okay. All right. Uh huh. These are so so good. It's not just a novelty like chicken wing because you think like peanut butter and jelly But no, they are amazing uh, They double fry them so it has the perfect crisp to it and I love them Like I don't know if you can get them in Steakhouse 71 or if it's just for here But I will definitely get these again whenever I come and visit the bar because those are probably now my favorite chicken wings on property I mean Disney doesn't have that many great chicken wings to begin with, but these are something special I do warn you though, they are very, very sticky. I am definitely more of a flat fan. I don't like the drums too much. Let me know in the comments where you are. I'm 100% team flats, but I do like some drummies sometimes. So we had two of the drinks. We had the Coco Belvedere, and then we had the Highball. And I like them both, but the Highball was probably my favorite so far. Uh, I definitely want to come back and try them for fans of the Seven Seas Lagoon because remember they used to have a uh, big drink here in a fishbowl. They now have the Tequila Sunrise which is kind of replacing that and it looks just as fun but that serves up to two to four guests so I'll need some friends to tackle that one. And it's going to happen, don't you worry. Almost time for our reservation. The chicken wings are sold by the weight, so it's usually five or six. And I didn't eat the last one, only because, like I said, I know we're gonna be getting a lot of food inside Steakhouse 71. But, I mean, if we need to get to-go boxes, we will. I kinda wanna show you guys the most I can. And uh, I also wanna see how the steak ranks up in my ranking, and we'll go over all my top rankings once we get in there. But, uh, almost time. I actually love all the Tomorrowland art in here. It is so beautiful. <laughs> like, you go out into the lobby and it has all the amazing Mary Blair artwork, and then all this Tomorrowland artwork in here. It's literally my favorite area. Like, this is like the best representation of the parks in a restaurant. I can't think of any other like restaurant that has this much like park influence than Steakhouse 71. I mean, if you guys think of something else, let me know. But uh, yeah, now it's time. We're gonna head on into the dining room here. And I think uh, more of the parks are gonna continue. They have a mural of the castle right there. Holy moly. Now we are at our table and the dining room in here is actually a lot better than what the Wave dining room used to be. I remember coming in here and dining at the Wave thinking they really needed to update the whole entire dining area and I'm happy that they did because it looks clean, it looks fresh and I'm sitting next to the castle mural so that makes me super happy. Look at that mural right there, isn't it beautiful? 
I'm telling you, I love all the parts art inside this restaurant. Like I said, you can't actually find a more representation of the parts themselves unless it's inside the parts them. You know what I mean? Like inside the parts themselves. But outside in the resorts, nothing compared to this. One of the things I noticed about this restaurant was the prices on the menu. Now, take in mind that the average steak or like the average filet at Walt Disney World is anywhere from $50 to $70. And that goes for any steaks actually. And here, the steaks are from $30 to $40. So you can actually get a lot with like the uh, same amount that you would spend in other steakhouses. And we're gonna try to stretch that out as much as possible. Possible. I'm very interested in the prime rib, but I do want to try a steak because I need to know it's a steakhouse Even though like a prime rib does belong in the steakhouse So we're gonna have to look at the menu and you'll see what I'm talking about with the prices Here is a look at the menu you can see there's a lot of good appetizers on there French onion soup and then the bacon and eggs and the crab cakes Those two are returning favorites from the wave so they brought those back and then the steakhouse cuts, here's all the different steaks. And you notice everything's under $40. The six ounce filet is $36. They have a New York strip there. They've got a 14 ounce dry aged uh, pork, uh, pork bone in rib chop. And then also the 12 ounce roasted prime rib. And honestly, that is all good prices. And then you get one side with each entree. So they have a good side selection there. And they also have one sauce for each of the selections. But you could order kind of like a sauce uh, sampler where you get all the sauces. And I think it's only $6. Kind of like the bread service at Sanaa. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to actually go with a little bit of uh, two things. I'm very interested in trying the prime rib but I do want to try a steak itself. So if you take six ounces and 14 ounces, you're looking at about 20 ounces of meat. So I was thinking about getting the filet and the prime rib, and it's only $65, I believe, 67, uh, it's under $70, compared to the 24 ounce bone-in ribeye at Space 220 that cost me $100. Do you see where I'm going with this? So then you get two sides, two sauces, two cuts of meat under 20 ounces, and if if I don't eat it all, then uh, Gracie's gonna have a little snack. And I, I, I kind of want to get it to try everything, but also I want to show you guys and also rank the filet. Not a big filet guy. If they had a ribeye on this menu, I would totally get the ribeye. One of the things that changed from the Wave to Steakhouse 71 is they no longer offer the complimentary bread service. So if you do want to get bread, it is on the appetizer menu and it's a sea salted dusted potato brioche. And my uh, servers told me that it's well worth it and it's a day process to actually make. So I think we're gonna try that as well. And I was also thinking about if they give out au jus with the prime rib. I feel like every prime rib should come with some au jus to dip the meat in. So I'm excited to see if that's an offering or if that's just one of the sauces. Like I know sometimes there's a red wine au jus, so maybe that's what that could be, but we'll find out. In total, what I decided to get was the filet, Pittsburgh style with the asparagus because they told me the asparagus comes with a nice little Parmesan crust on top of it. And I like Parmesan cheese. That's one of the cheeses that I do like. And then I got the prime rib with the garlic mashed potatoes. And for my sauces, I picked the chimichurri sauce and the signature Steakhouse 71 sauce. You gotta have the steak sauce on Steakhouse 71. You know what I mean? And here is the potato brioche. And take a look at that. They have a 71 stamped butter. And that is so awesome. And then they also have a tomato garlic spread right here and I can't wait to actually break into these brioches I hope they're nice and soft look at that kind of looks like a muffin doesn't it and I don't want to ruin the 71 here it is let's take a break here we're gonna break bread oh wow that comes apart really easily it's like pull apart bread almost oh wow <laughs> okay this is gonna be good okay <laughs> I think we'll try the garlic tomato spread first. I'm gonna take a little bit here and just spread it right on to the brioche. Here we go. The brioche bread is good. 
It's very flaky on the top and nice and soft on the inside. And I do like the tomato garlic spread, but it's not the best thing out there. And uh, the butter is probably going to just be like regular butter, but with a special 71 on there. And I hate to do it, but I got to do it. Oh, it hurts me to do it. It hurts me to do it. I'm going to spread 71 all over my bread. Here's to 71. <laughs> <laughs> a little 1971 bread and I like how the uh, 71 kind of came out on the bread like it's not like butter it's like uh, black so here we go I kind of like the butter better than I like the tomato garlic spread and uh, I don't want to eat the rest of the bread because once we get our uh, prime rib we're gonna need something to soak up all the juices with even though you do get the Yorkshire pudding in there but a little extra won't hurt like I said before one of the biggest draws of this restaurant is the price of the menu and I want to compare my like the price of the whole meal to the other restaurants that I've been to normally at places like California Grill, Shula's and Space 220 I spend anywhere from hundred to $120 so I'm gonna kind of see what I can get for that price here uh, including the chicken wings out front because I feel like that was a part of the experience and I don't know just try to match it up price versus quality but we have to know what the quality is like before we can actually figure that out so we have to try everything so far I was really impressed with the wings and the bread service and uh, we still have a filet and a prime rib coming and some nice sides and sauces so this is actually a a, a lot of food for what I normally would buy like what I would normally pay for and now it's time for the main event take a look at the prime rib right here this is 14 ounces and it's got the garlic mashed potatoes and the chimichurri sauce and it looks really really good and then right over here we have the six ounce filet Pittsburgh because you know I love it Pittsburgh with the uh, asparagus and the signature Steakhouse 71 sauce. So we have a lot to get to. I think I'm gonna dive into both of the steaks. So I'm gonna cut into here first, and then the prime rib. And we're just gonna try them so they don't get cold. But yeah, this looks good. Oh, this is gonna be a good, good meal. It's a little bit small though. Like I said, it's six ounces and 14 ounces. This doesn't even equal one of my 24 ounce uh, bone-in ribeyes at Space 220. And it's like $40 cheaper. First things first, we're gonna cut into the filet. We're gonna scoot out the steak sauce. We'll try that a little bit later. And look at that. Okay, this is looking good already. I love a little crust on the outside. That's my Pittsburgh style. And the chef knew exactly what I would like. He knew. <laughs> look at that. Okay. All right, all right. I can dig this. Oh yeah, get all that sauce right there. And we're gonna take our first bite. Now, I'm not a big filet guy. I love the ribeyes, I love the tomahawks, and uh, if this ranks high up there for me, then it's gotta be pretty good. I mean, uh, the filets, like, they're good. It's just, you know, I like a nice fatty piece of meat. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I love ribeyes. So, here we go. Filet first. <laughs> That is a good filet. Oh yeah. Also kudos to the chef because uh, it being so good has to do with the way he cooked this steak. It is perfect the way I like it. And honestly, I would put this pretty high on my list as it comes to filets. This is really, really good. And for $36, you can't beat that price. Honestly, you cannot beat that price at all. Now we're gonna try a little bit of the filet with the garlic mashed potatoes. And you know I love my potato and steak combination. So this is probably gonna be really good as well. Okay, I'm gonna hold off on that last bit of steak right there. I'm gonna dive to the asparagus and look at the Parmesan on them. I mean, honestly, that looks so delicious. And the steak, perfect. Like I said, we'll talk about it and I'll find a good rating of where I'd like to put it. Uh, but first, we're gonna have some veggies and then some more meat and potatoes. And plus, 
they brought out all these sauces for me so I can try a little bit of everything. How awesome is that? I do love me asparagus. All right, here we go. The asparagus is good. I like it. It's definitely a real good like texture. I like asparagus to have a little snap on it, but I don't like it too soggy. And the Parmesan is actually added really well to it. I would definitely get this again, even though I do want to try the broccolini. But now we're going to dive in to the prime rib. Look at that bad boy. That's looking good. And I got a little au jus right here to add to it. You know, because you, you got to have that extra au jus. You know what I'm talking about? Look at that. Oh, yeah. Much too good. We're gonna take the little side right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be good. I love it. Look at that crust. Look at that. Look at the crust and seasoning on that prime rib. Much too good. I mean, this is gonna be something amazing. Oh, boy. Okay. So, we're gonna dunk a little bit right on in here. Get it nice and juicy. And, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm a fan. This is good. And I can't wait to try it with the mashed potatoes. Like, oh wow. This is a good, good prime rib right here. There we go. A nice scoopsy potato, spread it on like butter. Perfect. I think we know where this is going. <laughs> Now we also want to grab that Yorkshire pudding right there, soak up all the juices. That's the way, that's how you do it. Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> Out of all the sauces, I really like the chimichurri sauce and the Steakhouse 71 sauce. The horseradish sauce is pretty good and that goes good with the prime rib, but these two were my favorite. I really liked it and I also like that. The au jus though, that's where it's at. I don't know if you can get that normally because it's baked within the, uh, it's cooked within the prime rib. So you'll have to ask your server for details in case they have it. But very flavorful. I do have to say, I like the prime rib a little bit better. Uh, mainly because I'm not a big filet fan, but that filet is cooked perfectly, so it got a lot of extra points for that. And I think once we leave, I'll go pull over to the side. We'll talk a little bit more and I'll let you know where they rank with all my other steak recommendations. But I also think I need to look at the dessert menu. I don't even need to look at it because I know there is a chocolate cake, a 15 layer chocolate cake for 15 floors of the contemporary that I need to try. I mean, it has to happen. Wow, there it is. The Steakhouse 71 15 layered cake. 15 floors of the contemporary. So the raspberry must be the California grill up here. And I'm definitely gonna be taking some of this home with me. There's no way I can finish it. I've got a nice little box over here full of, uh, well, I've got like two, three, two or three pieces of prime rib and a little bit of the steak for Gracie. Uh, but I might have this tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. It might be go it might be good with like your morning cup of coffee. I always feel bad though destroying beautiful desserts, but we gotta do it. So I, <laughs> it's a little bit hard on the top, but I'm gonna go right down. Oh boy. Look at that. <laughs> and then we're gonna kind of just grab a little of that raspberry on there. And perfect. I hear that the cake is very rich. So we're gonna find out. Oh yeah, that is good. It's hard to keep on cutting the cake down like this way. So we're gonna have to lay this cake down. We're gonna have to lay it down. We're gonna slide it over to this side of the plate and then we're gonna hit it with the fork. Timber, boom. <laughs> The cake is very, very delicious. It's very rich, like I said. And there's a little bit of Jack Daniels in there. Goes well with the raspberry. 
now I am all finished and I am full. I couldn't finish the 15 layer cake. I mean, I knew that was gonna happen anyway, so I have a box of that to take home. And then I also have a box of some uh, leftover steak and prime rib to give to Gracie. And I figure I'll bring you guys along and you know show you guys as she gets her little snack. She deserves it, she's a good girl. But overall, I really do love Steakhouse 71. I love the affordability of it. Uh, I, f I feel like the cuts of meat are a little bit smaller portion wise so you have a bigger variety so you can try multiple things at the same price that you would pay at some of the other places like I said Steakhouse uh, 71 I mean uh, Space 220 cost me uh, just about a hundred dollars and Steakhouse 71 here my bill was ninety dollars inside and then I also bought the wings at the bar for $14 so I spent about $120 altogether and look at that I got two appetizers two entrees and a dessert like that is insane Do you know what I mean and for a family that is really amazing and uh, yeah overall the prime rib was amazing they actually use a secret blend of spices for the prime rib that they called the steakhouse 71 uh, seasoning and that was phenomenal and the chef prepared the filet amazingly like that is really good job because like I said I'm not a big fan of filets but that was a good steak I wouldn't put it in my top five like I said uh, I'd probably be in my top 10 top 10 in Disney World you know what I mean but uh, overall yeah very very good I love it and uh, I wonder if Gracie's gonna love it we'll find out I'm home Ooh. <laughs> what what you smell something good huh huh yes but look at you you smell the steak don't you yes I got something for you yes 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 I do only the best for this pretty princess so I'm not just gonna give her the scraps I think uh, we're gonna make a little meal for her we're gonna do a little steak and eggs it sound good hot huh, Chrissy Goo she's excited first we must prepare the meats we're gonna cut up the meat in nice small little pieces so that we can get flavor and pieces of steak in every single bite. Perfect. There we go. Throw them in the pan. Bada bing, boom, 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 boom. Bada boom, 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 boom. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now for some of the other steak. She's, she's getting the best of both worlds here. She's gonna love it. There we go. Perfect. Gotta get it all in there. Beep, beep, boop, 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 boop. A little more. Excellent. Now, some large cage free brown eggs. I think we'll only do one. Yeah, good ratio. Excellent. Two eggs. Bam. Excellent. And uh, yeah, just mix. Nice and easy. She knows something's happening. Yes, you know. Oh, yes, you do. You want a treat? You want a snacky? Huh? You want a snacky? It's coming. It's cooking. Look it. Oh, yeah. It's cooking. And it looks like we're all done. Feed me, foolish mortals, some steak and eggs. Oh, yeah. She's going to love this. <laughs> Perfect. Oh. Oh. Who's a good girl? Are you a good girl? You want this? Huh? You want this? Who's a good girl? Sit. Good girl. Sit. Give me paw. 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 Good girl. Look at your pretty nails. Aren't you the prettiest princess? Yes, you are. All right. Here it comes. Oh. Is it good? Oh yes, much too good. Oh, look at her. <laughs> she loves it. And also, you guys like my hidden Mickeys in my rug? Isn't that fancy? This is from the Wilderness Lodge. 
hey, don't be dropping the giblets on the wilderness lodge rug. I'm gonna move this over here, actually. <laughs> Onto the monorail mat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I know, good girl. I'm not sure if you guys needed all that, but I was happy to show you. I love her, I really do. And uh, I don't know, little little steak and egg surprise for her, she loves it. Normally I like to make her eggs uh, in the morning sometimes. And then I also like to boil chicken and white rice. But a uh, little treat every now and then, she deserves it. She's the best, she does so much for me, honestly. She's my best friend. <laughs> Anywho, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it and uh, We'll see you next time. Bye